Welcome along to our latest Premier League weekend preview podcast here with World Sports Report. Myself, Bobby Jackson and James Mason taking you through a pick of the games today. Uh, we'll start off, I suppose, on Friday night. It is uh, a bottom of the table clash, one that doesn't really jump out necessarily when you take into consideration the other matches we've got this weekend. But it's Norwich who host Watford. Fans of these clubs will both be thinking it's crucial they get three points. Yeah, it is crucial. I mean, you look at it, 19th against 20th and both sides at the moment are in a terrible run of form. Now, Norwich haven't had any win in their last six. As for Watford, they're still searching for their first victory this season. 11 attempts in. It hasn't quite happened. They got rid of Javi Graffi after four games. They brought back in Kike Sanchez. Flores hasn't had that desired effect. They've had some improved performances, I think, when you look at it. They've had some draws in there. But the last game they had, they lost 2-1 at home against Chelsea. And for around 75, 80 minutes of that game, they were absolutely dreadful. There was yeah. no fight. There was nothing in that team. Suddenly, they got a goal back through, I'd have to say, dodgy penalty <laughs> awarded through VAR when Jorginho took down at Gerard Delafeu. And then they got that goal, and suddenly they put the pressure on. They had that belief. So they need that work rate. It's it's key that Kike Sanchez-Flores finds out who are his players that are going to roll up their sleeves in this dogfight and get them out of the relegation zone because they've got quality in the squad. But I don't think some of the individuals they're not the ones you want in this type of situation. They need some, like, a Troy Deeney to come back from injury. Yeah. He's been a crucial miss at the moment, I think. He really rallies the troops. And looking at sort of the, the betting-wise for this one, I'm going to go both teams to score for this. Now, Watford have been poor going forward this season. They're the lowest scorers, so you're probably thinking, well, why am I suggesting that? But four to six is both teams to score. Now, Norwich generally play attacking football. They leave themselves exposed to the back. They've conceded 26 goals this season. That's only one less than Southampton, who have the worst defensive record. Of course, that lays a lot to the 9-0 hammering yeah. the Saints got against City. As to Watford, well, they've conceded 23 as well. So both teams really, really struggle to keep it tight at the back. Norwich, six of their seven points have come at home as well. So you'd expect them to put on a bit of a show for their fans. They do struggle when Timo Pukki doesn't score, but he has been in good form this season. As to Watford, you'd, you'd think there's going to be a bit of an increase from them. You'd hope they'd get some sort of response in this type of game as well, where it's against a relegation rival. They can get themselves closer to getting out of the bottom three. So for me, four to six, both teams to score. That's probably where I'm going to stay with this one. So we go to Saturday then. It's Leicester against Arsenal, a 5.30 kickoff in the Premier League. It's third against fifth. Leicester enjoying a fantastic season under Brendan Rodgers. Lots of people talking about and potentially being a side to, to qualify for the Champions League. Um, they've exceeded expectations to this point. They've only lost five times since Brendan Rodgers took charge in February. He seems to have galvanised this squad, really taken them back to a good level, a similar level to where they were when they went on to win the Premier League title. So they're coming up against an Arsenal side who are really struggling for form as well. They're not, they've not won in their last four. They were held to a draw in the Europa League in midweek as well. There's problems on and off the field, question marks over the long-term future of Unai Emery at the club. And they did beat Arsenal last season as well on home soil. They've uh, won the last two, in fact, at the King Power Stadium against the Gunners and are unbeaten in three, drawing the other one. So uh, I find it very difficult to make an argument for Arsenal coming out on top uh, in this game. And Leicester are 11 to 10 to win this match. I think that's a really good price considering this is a side going places uh, this season. I'd also be looking at goals as well. Um, over 2.5 has happened in the last four meetings between these two sides. You can get that at 63 to 100. Uh, over 3.5 has happened in three of the last four meetings. You can get that at 6 to 4. I think very attractive prices there. Two sides that I think will be going out to attack. Certainly Leicester on home so will want to score goals. Arsenal can't defend and have got a few goals in them as well. So I think that goals market really jumps out to me. Um, we'll go back across to James then. You've got another game to bring us. Yeah, Burnley taking on West Ham United. Now again, pretty much like Norwich against Watford I previewed. These are two teams that are out of form at the moment. Now Burnley have had three straight defeats coming into this one. I think the manner of, defeat, of their defeats haven't been that bad. It's just the fact they've been on the end of the wrong result. So as to West Ham, after what was a really positive start to the season, they've suddenly capitulated and there's question marks, I think, already over Manuel Pellegrini and his position potentially. It just I don't know whether Pellegrini is just a little bit long in the tooth now, whether he thinks yeah. after this season he could go because 
he is getting on a little bit there and maybe his tactics aren't certainly working with this Hammers squad. He's had a lot of money to spend and just hasn't really clicked so far. Now, West Ham, they've had no win in six and they got beat 3-2 against the Newcastle side last weekend that struggled for goals ahead of that match. They'd only scored six Newcastle going into that one. They went 3-0 up. It was a valiant attempt to come back from West Ham, but it was just too little too late in that game. I just think Burnley... At home, they're the proposition for me because they've won two of their last three at Turf Moor, so they're pretty good in their own backyard. West Ham haven't won in the last four away from home in the league, so you can see the struggles that are sort of continuing to develop for them. 13-10 to 10 for Burnley to pick up the win. I think that is a really good price actually to go in for. I just don't think when you look at some of this West Ham squad the team has put out, whether again they've got the fight in their team to actually go to a Burnley and pick up a result. You look at some of the players in there, Sebastian Haller's having a difficult month or so after a good start that he had. Uh, Andrew Yarmolenko as well. Players like that where you think, are they the type of players you want in that side yeah. that are going to roll up the seas? I don't think they really are. Another interesting bet as well that I looked at, Ashley Barnes now, he signed a new contract for Burnley 2022. He's been in decent form for them this season as well. Now, to score any time in the game, he's 11 to 8. I think it's always I think, good to back somebody who's just had some positivity, some good news about them. Signing a new contract is probably there on home soil as well. So I've got 11 to 8, Barnes to score any time, Burnley to win 13 to 10. Uh, I'll finish off then with the big game of the weekend. I think it's Sunday's match. It's Liverpool against Manchester City, the, the two title rivals. I think the only two probably in the race, although some might suggest Leicester, if they continue with this sort of form, can, can close that gap. Uh, but six points is the difference at the moment between Liverpool and Manchester City. So huge importance on this one. A nine-point gap potentially for Liverpool if they can win at Anfield, which they often tend to do. In fact, you have to go all the way back to April 20th 2017 for the last time they lost on home soil. That was a surprise defeat to Crystal Palace. It's a game that Manchester City cannot lose, but they need to go and try and win as well if possible. There was a goalless draw between these two sides at Anfield last season, and that'll be a bit of a concern for Pep Guardiola, uh, that they might not be able to breach the, this strong Liverpool defence. Uh, in terms of the, the outrights for this game, 17-10 to 10 for Liverpool. The draw at 11-4, to 4, you can get City at 13-8. to 8. Um, So I think I would probably lean towards City with some of the value that's given you with them being away from home, a side that we know can get victories in big games. Uh, but for me, I'm leaning more towards the both teams to score in this game. That's happened in four of the last five matches and it's at 10 to 19. I think um, both teams have got lots of goal scorers in their side. And I think the way that City are going to attack this game, they're probably going to be a little bit open defensively too. And that will lead to both sides getting on the score sheet. And if someone does for City, Sergio Aguero is the likely man to do that he's already got nine goals so far this season in fine form the Argentinian it's been rotated by Pep Guardiola so he's kept fresh uh, for these big games he, he's bringing Gabriel Jesus in for other matches and, and giving them both a fair crack at it uh, he scored five in his past five seasons uh, at City against at Liverpool and you can get him at eight to five as an anytime goal scorer in this match so uh, that's my look at the game between uh, Liverpool and Manchester City on Sunday we're taking you through our preview of four matches then ahead of this weekend's games in the Premier League uh, do make sure that you follow us on social media and subscribe on YouTube